Coming up today on The Village Idiom. That one's going to be 60 bucks. You're like, didn't want to spend $60, but that's the one I'm going to get if I can choose the lumpy, lumpy bush <laughs> or this like spacious. So it's 60 for one. <laughs> dum, dum, da, da, village Idiom. Hello and welcome to The Village Idiom. We are a podcast that takes a popular saying and takes a shallow but hopefully, if we're lucky, comedic dive into its usage, its origins, and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, But we'll for sure hang our conversation on said topic. My name is Jurassic Mark. And I am Skinny. And we are here for your entertainment. (laughs) For ours. I will gladly do something kidding? just for my own entertainment. Totally. And I know you're the type too, where you will sit inside of a room and do something just to make yourself laugh. Absolutely. 100%. You don't care if anyone else around you. Nope. Yeah. That's the beauty of this whole podcast. Is it's, that if, it's if more the, fun if, if somebody else if the two, is. Well, there's two of us laughing at least. Yeah. We, that we, uh, we're at least enjoying ourselves. We hope you are too. We are. You are. They are. They are. We are. Together. We are. Well, it's it all the same. It's all the same anyway. <laughs> it's all the same. <laughs> which is our... You enjoy it. We enjoy it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> which is our fancy segue into today's idiom. Which is... Do you say it? You want me to say it? You say it. You jump in yeah. with it. Oh, let's, let's start with this. Sergeant Jericho Jackson, 13th Precinct, City of Detroit. I want to get to Peter Delaplane. I figure you can help. What's Delaplane got to do with me? Are you kidding? He owns you. He rents me. Six of one, half dozen the other. You know what movie that is? No. Carl Weathers in the classic. Carl Weathers? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Was he in Rocky? Yeah. <laughs> really? He's Apollo Creed, but that's not that's not Rocky. That's Action Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely <laughs> lost me. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. I was so amazed at going through this, how uh, polarizing this particular idiom is. What did you come across? That it makes people angry. What? That this idiom, I haven't seen it before within the other idioms, that this idiom irritates people. I did not come across the irritation. Six and one, half a dozen of the other. Okay. And just that it means sometimes, uh, well, six of one is a specific and half a dozen is vague. Half a dozen is not vague. This is the issue. How is it vague? How many people are in line ahead of you? You're at, the, you're at, you're at Walmart. There's a, some people. How many people were ahead of you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, a dozen. Okay. So if I go, there was, uh, oh, there's four to seven people. There's, uh, there's a half a dozen people. Right. That half a dozen isn't always six. We're coasting. That's okay, as long as we're all lined up with our shoot here. Uh, half a dozen is six. <laughs> and this is the reason why there's like, irritants. That's like saying, uh, saying, ah, oh, there was about five. Oh, that's vague. Yeah. yeah. So how many were there? Half a dozen. Yeah. Six. <laughs> no, it's not. It is. Because uh, some people go, ah, oh, there was a couple. And they don't really mean two. This is, a couple is two. I know. That's what I'm saying. This I is agree. A couple is two. A dozen is 12. So a dozen, a, 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 the, the dozen generalization. When you get a dozen eggs, are you unsure how many you're getting? No, you would be very irritated if you only got like six. Or eight or whatever. It's like, if you want a dozen eggs, you want 12. If there's yeah. 11 in there, right. you're oh, So a dozen, back. you're saying is specific, but half a dozen is not. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. The half a dozen is, 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 a, is a generalization. Even the phrase, it's like, not a, a baker's dozen. A baker's dozen is 13. And that makes sense to you? Well, because of the history of it. So, but the idea, this is why the idiom creates tension, is because a dozen is a vague way of saying 12. So Actually, say- it's not. A dozen, uh, the word dozen comes from a French word, dozaine, which means 12, which comes from the Latin word duodecum. Do you want to say it with me? Duodecum, duodecum, which also means 12. It's literally, by definition, going all the way back to Latin, 12. Not about 12, not around 12, not a little more than 10. The exact number of disciples our Lord and Savior had. <laughs> How many did he have? A dozen. <laughs> <laughs> about a dozen. Well, well, if you say about, if you add the word about or approximately or so what around about, a dozen. But what about when they added one after Judas uh, hung himself? Did they have a baker's dozen or did they have about a dozen? Just just prior to him hanging himself when there was a <laughs> an overlap and there was 13, as a baker's dozen. Or depending on how well or well not his, his, his own hanging went. How well not? Like how good well, the knot he, was when well, he hung cause, himself? Because it, it could have been like... 
11 and two halves. <laughs> 11 and, how many people are in front of you? Exactly. 11 and two halves. <laughs> you say a dozen. A dozen is 12. So uh, it, it, there's times when you would say, uh, like, uh, you're, you're going to do, a, uh, I'm just making one up right now. Yeah. Uh, you're going to do a, a sporting game and you know, throw out some some hula hoops for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So if I says throw out a bunch. A bunch is vague. Half a dozen. Half a dozen is six. It, it can be six. It is six. It could be five. It could be seven. No, that would be five or seven. <laughs> six is half a dozen. Have you, have you heard this? <clears throat> I will I'll, I'll, I'll lead in. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dozen. Dozen who? Dozen the baker have 13 eggs? 13 what? Dozen the baker have 13 eggs. Dozen the baker have 13 eggs. A baker has bread. Hmm. So 13 buns, 13 loaves. The baker has no eggs. <laughs> well, I guess he, he started with eggs. <laughs> uh, dozen the baker have 13 loaves. Well, I, this is it. Yeah. Is it a baker's dozen? Baker's dozen is 13. Mm-hmm. Do you know why? Because that's a whole different idiom, but, <laughs> but it would be, well, I'm sure, uh, because it's a vague term. No, because a baker was selling buns or loaves in dozens. And if they were ever short, they were fined. Hmm. This is historic. Historically, they were fined. So they always put in one extra loaf. So no one could ever accuse them of short changing the customer and they'd be fined or stoned. If they undersold their dozen loaves, so Baker's dozen was like, I'm not getting in trouble. There's you don't. You, you wouldn't there. want to get into uh, trouble for that. And so this is the tension in the idiom. What's a few? A few is three. No, it isn't. <laughs> a few is vague. So I have three a, or four. I have a couple, which is two. I have a few. Three or four, five, maybe several. Several. Bunch. Half dozen. Crap load. And then there's buttload. <laughs> buttload. <laughs> yeah, I I couldn't disagree more. A dozen is twelve. Uh, this is this. I is so, think that I'm playing can, the devil's I, advocate. I think I have this. for sure. I have for sure used it vaguely. I know what you're saying. So this is why there's tension with this particular idiom. And so I was devil's advocating it. Uh, whatever whatever side you picked, I was going to pick the other side. Nice. Just just. just this is and so you find this tension online of 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 is a a, a dozen a generalization or is it specifically twelve? Because there's instances where you would just lose your mind if you paid for a dozen and got twelve. Oh, I'd like a dozen donuts. You open the box and there's five. It's like, right. well, that's not that's a dozen. Not a dozen. Then it's specific. Right. Dirty I dozen. Wasn't. Cheaper by the dozen. Baker's dozen. That there's phrases. Dozen around. the baker have thirteen <laughs> eggs. Dozen the baker have thirteen <laughs> eggs. That's original. I looked nice that up. I, I looked it. I'm like, this is too good. Like, and um, and it's not a thing. It's not. A, it's not a. If you switch it to I loaves, it, you're onto one. I made a new knock knock joke. Yeah. With, does, with, doesn't yeah, the baker a, have thirteen loaves? Doesn't the baker have thirteen loaves? Okay, I'll change it. Yeah. Yeah. There's something there, right? <laughs> it's good. It is good. Yeah. So, anyways, that's that is the answer to your question as to why the tension exists. In I a never phrase. came across any tension. Six of I one, have no tension. Half a dozen of the other. That it bothers people. That people that, are stupid. <laughs> that, that this this tension. How many exists. inches are in a foot? There's twelve. That's too vague. No, twelve is twelve. But there's a dozen inches in a foot. You're just rounding it up to twelve. <laughs> Give or take is eleven point three four. I just rounded <laughs> round up to the nearest two. Twelve. So let's just change that. Instead of say five, ten, you round it up to the nearest five. People do that. How many people? I don't know. Twenty-five. There's a hundred people. Whatever. If you round it up to the nearest two, and people will use the there's about one hundred and two. <laughs> people will use <laughs> it in that vague uh, in that vague sense for exaggeration purposes, and so you won't want to say twelve. Uh, so if you want to infer twelve, you may say a dozen, even though there's not a dozen. So you'll say like, well, there's so many people in front of me. There's like a dozen cars ahead of me in line. Sure. Yeah. Was there 12 cars in? No. No, like there's... nine. <laughs> yeah. And this is why <laughs> right. people will use a dozen as a. Yeah, but that's the misuse of the word dozen. Right. And so this is why the tension exists in the phrase six of one, a half a dozen of the other. And people will argue that that's that they're not the same, even though they're intended as, well, it's six of one, it's six of another. If anybody argues that half a dozen is different than six, they don't know what the word dozen means. 
<laughs> this is the doesn't they know what <laughs> exactly doesn't the baker have 13 loaves oh that's funny yeah so anyways that's 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 the very um, so anyway, that's our little that's the long long exaggerated that's our, answer that's our argument over the word dozen but the <laughs> idiom six of one half a dozen the other literally means or figuratively means it doesn't matter what you pick it's the same thing it's the same thing it doesn't matter it doesn't matter well, <laughs> doesn't, half a dozen matter that, that, should, that, that should be that should just be right there. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Six of one, half a dozen matter. That's the that would that, be a better ending. That's a better one. That would be a better ending to that idiot. Uh, I, I did come across a, an, an alternate version from Chicago. A band? You, uh, no, Peter Cetera. Peter Cetera. <laughs> <laughs> Six of one, half a dozen the other. I am the man who will fight for your honor. <laughs> <laughs> it says this honor. Uh, Chicago, South Side phrase, so uh, region specific. Swineheart, Pigheart, it's all the same. That's that, a local rendition. Swineheart, Pigheart, it's all oh, the same. Oh, Swineheart, Pigheart. That's swine a heart, Chicago, pig. like American Chicago. Yes. Huh. I, I discovered it was a Chicago South Side phrase. Swineheart, Pigheart, it's all the same. Yes, yeah, Swine, Pig. Chicago, the musical. Swine, Pig, it's all the Catherine same. Catherine Zeta Jones. Swine, Pig, Swine. What is it? Swine flu, pig flu? Swine heart. Swine when, heart, pig when heart. pigs fly? Swine flu? What is it? <laughs> doesn't matter. That's 601. Half yeah, a dozen swine, pig, it's all the same. Swine heart, pig heart, pig heart, heartburn. Who cares? Well, that, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make it like that. It's from the movie um, Chicago. Maniacs from the, by the Three Stooges. Really? Yeah. Read that again. That's a great little lineup of words. So... Um, Swineheart, pig heart, it's all the same. So then the movie says, yeah, swine, pig, it's all the same. Swineheart, pig heart, pig heart, heartburn, who cares? We'll make it like that. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Good. From the, the movie Maniacs, 1936 Maniacs. by the Three Stooges. I love it. Yeah. Swineheart, pig heart, it's all the same. A little yeah. Chicago Six idiom. Half it doesn't matter at all. Yeah. So I'm totally saying it that way from now on. <laughs> half it doesn't matter at all. Well, uh, we um, why don't we get into origins? Or do we want to get into origins? Or do we want to well, talk about... For those of you who are watching me on the internets right now, flexing my, my pectorals. I'm just kidding. I'm just a little flabby. <laughs> There's pectorals in there somewhere. <laughs> we are wearing our and village... Six of one. <laughs> pectorals, flab. <laughs> six of one. Half a dozen of the pounds or Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Half a dozen pounds per breast. We are wearing official <laughs> village licensed idiom. <laughs> the Village Idiom podcast t-shirts. And so, for those of you who are commenting in, we will uh, accumulate for this 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 next week. I swear, wearing this these t-shirts take ten pounds off of you to other people's vision. <laughs> That's nice. They're black and they have vertical stripes. <laughs> Just don't look too hard. So we're really excited to be giving these away. Yeah. And so we uh, we made sure we bought a an extra, I don't know, six of one, <laughs> half a dozen of the other. There's a box of half a dozen matter. And so make sure you comment in and uh, we'll uh, scramble the names around and we'll draw out. We've got from double XL all the way down to small. So Smalls. there's a little something. So there's a little yeah. something for- What uh, are you wearing? This is an XL. Yeah. I got an immediate. I tried a small. It was- Nobody wants that. <laughs> if I put it on, no one would want it now. Be like, thanks for this stretched out shirt. <laughs> Value Village is, is going, no thanks. We can't move that. We can't even resell this. Can't give it away. To like a rag clearance, company. Clearance. Yeah. All right, let's get into some origins. Oh, let's Where'd get into some oranges. Where'd oranges. Six no of one. one I turned around and looked behind. Those words came from. All right, we're slow, slow today. I missed my cue, but we got the idea. That, that, that's okay. So where does this actually come from? Well, uh, I already explained where the word dozen comes from because of your stupidity of being vague. But uh, this phrase is first recorded um, as six of the one and half a dozen of the other in Ralph Clark, who died in 1794, a British naval officer in his journal. He was a first lieutenant on the HMS Sirius when the ship was wrecked in March 1790 on a reef in Norfolk <laughs> Island in the Pacific Ocean. The HMS Sirius? <laughs> HMS Sirius. <laughs> How do you not laugh at the own name of your ship? 
Sirius. Guys, X- I'm on the HMS Sirius. But it's spelt like Sirius XM S I R. What does that word mean? I-U-S. I'm serious. I'm serious. Serious Black. Anyway, this is what he wrote in his uh, in his journal uh, upon being stranded, uh, talking about thieves that have stolen rum. Blah blah blah. He says, "Of all the places, this uh, of all the places in the world, this is the greatest nest for rascals. It is impossible to trust any one of our men. Hardly much more of any of the convicts. In short, there is no difference between soldier, sailor, or convicts. There are six of the one and half a dozen of the other." There you go. In Ralph Clark's journal, uh, shortly followed the second recording recorded version of it that we know of is in 1820 uh and it is in Hmm. the edinburgh review uh, on the composition and analysis of the inflammable gaseous compounds resulting in the destructive distillation of coal and oil and this is what it says after the chlorine and olefiant gas have been absorbed that the original quantity of hydrogen remains in the jar thus demonstrated that there are six of the one and half a dozen of the other so those are the oldest this goes back to the 1700s man that's crazy yeah, I, I. We don't know if Ralph Clark is the guy. Hmm. Like, was he witty enough to have just be uh, shipwrecked and like, ah, this is funny. They've stole my rum. Six of the one, half a dozen. <laughs> I guess you got a lot of time to write when you're shipwrecked. Yeah, he's quite the creative writer. But yeah, it goes back I 1700s by, by braiding the hair off my back and, <laughs> and lashing it to turtles. <laughs> the, the, How many turtles? <laughs> Or the African Are they European turtles or tortoises? <laughs> for me, yeah, for me. Six, of one. six of one, half a dozen, the other. Actually, we keep saying. Actually, I'll play this. Exactly, right. that's it right there. What, what? Tur- turtles, tortoises? Yeah, alligator, crocodile. To us, six, six of one, one, half a dozen, dozen of the other. To a you know zoologist, it matters. Right, and this is when people use this phrase that they're usually being corrected. Right, like. There's a difference between turtles and tortoises, you know. Well, that's how people would. It's if I said, and you go, Meh. it's like, oh no, it's a crocodile, and you're and you're like, that's an alligator. That's an alligator. It's like six of one, half a dozen of the other. It's like they're not. The if you same. have six of one, you have six alligators and half a dozen of the crocodiles. You're in trouble either way. Either, either way, it's a bad situation. <laughs> it's bad. But what I was gonna say is, we've a couple times we haven't even finished the phrase, so people have shortened it, and they'll just go, eh, six of one, six of one. Which is what uh, this clip right here does. See if you recognize what show this is from. Just give it to me. I'm trying. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's with our w- Wi-Fi here. Here, see. let's try this again. Ready? Hello, I'm Raymond Holt. I started Are a little too early. Here to Wait turn for it. Here it comes. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's really messed up. But the guys <laughs> that Brogan wrote about, they were great detectives. I mean, they were legit. Some of them were legit. Some of them were just Brogan's drinking buddies. <laughs> Sir, that is a brilliant idea. It wasn't an idea. It was it's a scheming guy and a good personal hero. Yeah, six of one. There it is. Just ah, six of one. It's Andy Samberg. Yeah. And I don't know. Brooklyn Nine. Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah. Yeah. He got a distinct voice. Yeah. Andy so, Samberg. Andy Samberg. Six of one. So whether but nobody shortens it the other way, like eh, half a dozen of the other. No, it doesn't work. You <laughs> got to start work. off with its beginning. <laughs> Because they are different, the two halves, and that's the challenge. They're not. They're the same. The white people don't say half a dozen of the other. Eh, half a dozen of the other. Five or six of one and half a dozen of the other. Would people be happy with that? <laughs> would that make all the, the people who think that the word half a dozen is vague, would that make them happy if it was, eh, you know what, five, six, seven of one, half a dozen of the other. Give or take. Give or take. <laughs> I think that's... But it has times where that's more appropriate. So what would make it more accurate? I mean, I think dozen is accurate. Half a dozen is half of that. But what would make it more accurate? Would you ha- would you have to say? Is there another comparative I- I- idiom that's like, it's what the same is the same? How about know. that one I just made right now? The same is the same? <laughs> the, sa- the same yeah. is the same. Hey, you know, the same yeah, is the same. The same of the same. Same old, same old. Same old, same old. I don't know. Like, what's the difference? That's what I usually go to. Uh, what's the diff? Well, so because it's that Christmas time of year and we're, we're celebrating, celebrating it out. If someone it's like, oh, I like your tree. And you're like, oh, it's, it's, we, we chopped it down. And another person's like, oh, ours is artificial. And you're like, ah, six, one, half a dozen of the other. Is it just that there's a tree in your house? Is that the six, one, half a dozen, the other? Or maybe is it if that- you got more like, ah, oh, this one's Douglas fir. This one's, that's the only tree reference I know, but <laughs> this is a Studebaker 9,000. Yeah, six of one. Well, because it's not the same. If you're so, we head out every year, a little family project, and we go out and we saw down a tree. Do you do that? Yeah, 
Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. This year was particularly exciting. Oh, my goodness. Okay, finish your story. I, for, okay. I just remembered something. So uh, we have enjoyed going to cut down a fresh tree every, every year. And we went uh, this past weekend to go get our tree and enjoy this family ritual. Getting the six of us together is its own hassle. The six and, of you? <laughs> yes. Or <laughs> half a dozen. Or half a you? dozen. <laughs> Ish. Um, How many and, in your family? <laughs> And so uh, we get out there, we're at the tree farm, and it's like, okay, what, what's going on? She's like, oh, yeah, the whole you cut thing, like, that closed last week, like. Last week? Yeah. And they're like, oh, it, everyone shut down early this year. There's been some tree shortage, Christmas tree shortage, oh. whatever. And so, is the story boring you? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. My Just bad. A bit of a, how much longer is this? <laughs> and so we get there. Uh, yeah, so you can't go cut down a tree, uh, but we do have these three trees you can choose from. And one is literally like a lumpy bush, like someone went and just chopped it off their neighbor's lawn. Like I a, went to school like with a lumpy sh- bush. Like a shrubbery. <laughs> and then uh, and the other one is like, this is a, 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 nor- a, norf- a Norfolk pine or a Norwood pine or some crazy nonsense. Well, funny enough, and Norfolk got- is where Ralph Clark, the, the inventor of this idiom, was stranded. Interesting. And it is a crap tree where it's like it, it, it branches out beautifully, and then there's literally a foot and a half so gap. It's, it's taller left to right than it is. There's a huge gap of like clear as day space in between, oh, and, and then, then like nice another top. layer, and then like a big foot and a half gap, and then another layer. It is the weirdest tree. I don't know why it exists. Is that the one you took? No, and then there's one that's beautifully perfect, looks exactly like a Christmas tree, but it's like that one's going to be sixty bucks. And you're like. Didn't want to spend sixty dollars, but that's the one I'm gonna get if I can choose the lumpy, lumpy bush <laughs> or this like spacious so it's sixty for one, <laughs> <laughs> or half a dozen D. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So you went with the sixty dollar full. Yeah, that's like that's that, that's so of a movie. Well, we got this one right here, and it's the lumpy bush, and we've got this one, the big, bush. <laughs> big so spaced out gappy tooth tree, or we got this beautiful oh. one here, this one right here. But it's sixty. Yeah, that's so that was the scenario. So we but we do go out every year to chop down a tree. It didn't quite work out that way this year. And so we really enjoy a real tree. And so when someone has a real tree, it's not a six of one, half a dozen of the other. I've got a tree in my house versus uh, an artificial or a real one. We really enjoy and put effort into having a real one. And so it's not eh, real tree, fake tree, six of one, half a dozen of the other. I'm like, huh. they're not the same. It's not the same thing. It's a tree in your house, I guess, or, or a green piece of plastic shaped in the form of a tree versus something beautiful created by nature. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All ours are fake. So six of one. <laughs> exactly. So you're like, maybe it's if, if it's if, if you care about it, the, the phrase sucks, which is why I think it causes tension. Well, that's why even in the, the clips where it was like, ah, whatever it's this and this eh, six of one. See, and one person doesn't give a rip, and the other person is very specific. It's because you care about it. If you care about it, then it's not six so to one. So the idiom is divisive. Yes. But the definition of the word dozen <laughs> should not be divisive. Maybe it's, yeah. Have you considered that the word dozen is loose? No. I know. I would have gone this. It's a big cyclical uh, conversation. The, okay. Random thought popped into my head. I remember visiting a home. It was like friends of my parents and they had a bunch of people over and it was Christmas time. And they had in the center of their home, this uh, glass, I don't even know what you call it. Anyway, it went, it, it was like a hole in their home that was no roof. A living room? No, like a courtyard, but maybe eight feet by eight feet, just this glass cube that had no ceiling on it, so they had real trees growing in there. Interesting. And like, that's what they decorated. Like a glass courtyard. Yeah, but not big. It was just right dead center in the house. That is interesting. And they, that, they had a tree in there that they decorated at Christmas time. And so it was that's a real tree that to was get in growing there, there. To get the leaves off. It had doors on the, yeah, I don't know. It had doors to get into their little, like you. Get out there and cut the grass. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> even more interesting that, because that popped in my head when you talk about real tree. I'm like, they grew a real tree in their home. Uh, more interesting than that is it. they said, uh, oh, actually, we bought this off of uh, Michael J. Fox's parents when we bought this house. Hmm. So he, the, he probably grew up in that that little house with the fir tree in the middle. <laughs> interesting. Uh, what I reacted to earlier, and I said, oh, I'll finish your story, is um, the re- one of the reasons I chose six of one, half a dozen of the other is it's kind of like 50-50. Like, that's oh, the same money. E- either half of this mm-hmm. is 50-50. And today, right now, we're recording... 
our 50th episode. Nice. Five zero. Five zero. That's very cool. We, yeah. we, we, we made it. We made it. We're going to make it through all of this year. and We're excited. Uh, we're uh, heading in and we're going to do 2020. Absolutely. So normally we might take a project and do something for a year, but we're going to continue the podcast through 2020. How, how can we not? With the success we've had and the amount of people who have reached out to us and the lives that have been changed. <laughs> <laughs> well, six of one. <laughs> yeah, we're going to continue on. We're hoping to have more guests. That is the game plan. More it's, more guests for uh, 2020. Yeah, and make it a little more uh, more fun and more banter, and it should be good. Yes, I'm excited about. It. So we're gonna take on uh, an, 2020 is gonna have a whole new vision. 2020 vision. That's beautiful. Thanks. I like your your tie-ins are great today. Well, you know, six of one. <laughs> your five, segue, five, six, seven one. Your segue machine. Well, as we kind of run into uh, the the end of, you want to know a, something interesting? Things. Yes. Fun fact. Uh, a potential name before they chose Friends as the title of the show, Friends. Uh, one of the running names was Six of One. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. That was one of the, they were running with that for a short while before it just got shortened down to just being called Friends. Hmm. Eh, six of One. <laughs> I don't know. Friends is way better, I think. Well, we say that now. Right. But it was like, hey, have you seen all 20 episodes, seasons of Six of One? Ross and Rachel from Six of One. Oh, it does sound kind of nice, doesn't it? <laughs> huh. It's better than, oh, I always wanted Ross and Rachel to to get together on half a dozen of the other. <laughs> that doesn't work so much. How, see? Because it's not the same. <laughs> Thank you. Case, case in point. Case in point. Okay, go ahead. Well, uh, heading into the home uh, stretch here, uh, we wanted to make sure uh, we send you through with some some riddlings. Riddlings. And so we're going to challenge you, our illegitimate children out there, uh, to our riddling challenge. How does it play? Well, it's a game that uh, we do every single episode, which takes two-part trivia-based question and requires a two-part but overlapping answer. So, for mm-hmm. example, last week uh, we talked about having your, cake, having your cake and eating it too. And so our riddle link that we left with everyone, which stumped quite, I got questions on this one. It stumped people, and I'll tell you why in a second. The riddle link we left for everyone was the simplest of cakes lost in American Idol to Reuben Studdard. So a lot of people were dancing all over the answer uh, uh, because uh, the simplest cakes we talked about in the episode was pound cake. Mm-hmm. And the person who lost to Reuben Studdard but went on to be much more famous was Clay Aiken. And for some reason, people just couldn't bring themselves to remove the first name. So like pound clay aiken pound pound clayken and it was just it was just pound caken mm. just just his last name okay so there was one successful answer and it was our our favorite he's good at these like I feel bad that we say his name so much but he is on fire with the answers and that's Dang Alano Dang Alano that's so awesome so yeah pound I love that pound guy caken. that's how the game is played so you got a couple I got a couple we'll leave at least one of them for the audience okay here we go. The number of the beast is saying the same thing, just in a different way. It's the best riddle question we've ever had. <laughs> the number of the beast. Six, six, six of one, half a dozen of the other. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> uh, we'll be playing some Metallica or something right now. That's so funny. Okay, I got one for you. Okay. Two, two equal choices for this cop movie. Starring Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg. Six and one, half a dozen of the other guys? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You did. They've got a few movies out together. I immediately I went to Daddy's Home. And they have two of those. That's so funny. The second the second Daddy's Home, the whole scene about heating the house, it just kills oh, me. Right, because you can Slays actually relate me. to yeah, it? Yeah, because like, that's yeah, my house. I know. Yeah, just the turning that, off. That, don't touch they the could heat. not, like, the first movie was, was all right, and the second one, when they bring in their fathers, uh, they could not have cast that any better. Will Ferrell's father being John Lithgow. John Lithgow and, and Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson as yeah. Mark Wahlberg. Uh, so great. That's perfect. Okay, so I got another one for you. Okay. How good is it? You want to leave yours for the peoples? It's not so good. All right. <laughs> Six of one. <laughs> <laughs> the city of Swineheart, Pigheart. Oh man! While singing, we got the beat. Chicago go. The sh- uh, Chicago goes. Yes. Yeah. Chicago goes. Chicago goes. Nice. I'll have two Chicago goes to go. <laughs> okay, I got one more. Don't answer it. I'm not sure what nationality it was. Don't but... talk about it. Let's not talk about it. But I liked it. 
I got one more, but we're going to leave it for the illegitimate children who well, are... Well, let me say how they can get a hold of us. Do it. Uh, you can reach us at the.village.idiom on Instagram. Uh, email through at thevillageidiompodcast at gmail.com. Or Telegram. With... Smoke signals. <laughs> what else? <laughs> a cup with a long string. <laughs> Uh, so, or Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter at Three Minutes Gone. But any of them are just as equally oh, good. And particularly if you've ever felt like, why would I do that? Come get a shirt. Get a shirt. At least to get a chance to get a the shirt. More like if you're just chiming in, you're going to get into into a draw. If you tell us a story, tell us something. Your ch- your, your odds are going up. Your I, odds I, are going up. We we can tell you straight up that Dang Allen was getting a shirt. That's right. Yeah, he is on fire. Make sure you tell us what size you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll get a hold of you if you if, if if you get selected for a shirt, we will find your size, send you the right one. Get us do the best. Get we us can. a final riddling to send us home. Go to little something like this. Hit it. Batman and Robin are sometimes called this Latin word for twelve. Nice, like it. Yep, you got it. Don't you? <laughs> it's a, I'm already saying it. Well, it's been fun putting uh, all of this together. We, we've enjoyed doing it. We hope you've enjoyed listening. I know I have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know I have. Well, six and one. Six and one. <laughs> so, well, it, it, it has been fun regardless. I am Skinny. And I am Jurassic. Just choose one, Mark. And these are the village idioms. Six or one, half a dozen of the other. That's three minutes gone.